The number one thing that I was thinking uh, when Putin made his speech is this. We all remember Grisha, right? Little Grisha, Russian kid in the Hoifu community, right? His mom, unfortunately, also very pro-Putin. Can't really blame her, you know? She got um, uh, brainwashed her whole life. Can't really blame her. And uh, this family is a great example of what's happening now in Russia. Grisha's mom is like, yeah, Putin, Putin, blah, 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 blah. Now, what do you think this woman would think when someone knocks at little Grisha's door? Luckily, he's still too young and is like, you are being drafted to, to join the great war in Ukraine. At that moment, even a brainwashed mother is going to be like, wait, wait, what? They're taking my boy? They're taking my boy? It's time. That was the first thing I was thinking, man. These people need to wake the Anyway, let's check this out real quick. Over the last month or so, things have gone really downhill for the Russian army. Ukrainian forces have recaptured thousands of square kilometers of territory, mostly in the north around Kharkiv. Another thing I want to talk about, which is, bro, bro, something I've seen on Twitter. Number one, first thing I want to say is, sometimes I make a mistake. I go to political German Twitter. What do I mean? Uh, in Germany, we have certain topics like certain political TV shows in the evening. And then people talk about that stuff on Twitter. The biggest mistake you can ever do in your life is read German political Twitter. These people are the most fucked up, gone people I've ever seen in my life, man. Can you tell us an example? Um, yesterday, Zara Wagenknecht, a, a left-wing politician that is actually pro-Russia, she says that we are in an economic war and we should stop supporting Ukraine uh, in order to get Russian gas and give gas to the German people, man. She said that yesterday uh, in, in a TV show. Anyone who can count to 10 knows, for example, that that is fucking ridiculous. People are dying and it's our duty to help these people in Ukraine. But this woman says we should stop helping them, man. Then I go to Twitter and I read about that stuff and there's all these people, these 50-year-old fucking Germans. She's right! Yeah! Why should I freeze for fucking Ukraine? Putin did nothing wrong. I feel like what, how I could be a big Twitch streamer, I could be like Hassan, but more like in a Bilberish way. I talk about the news, but I rant all the time. I think that's how I could be big on Twitch. What do you think? I don't care. Let's and go. As such, Russian morale is apparently at an all-time low. Nonetheless, the war isn't over yet, and the Russian army is still occupying most of Donbass and much of Ukraine's south coast. As you'd expect, attention has since turned to Putin. Yeah, Putin will probably try now to annex that eastern stuff, Donetsk, and that other thing, Luhansk. And I, I really hope Ukraine is like, and that's, here's a prediction, here's a prediction. I have make a prediction, and this is how fucked up the world is. Vladimir Putin understands he's losing this war. He makes the announcement and goes into talks with Ukraine and says, we are going to keep uh, Crimea, we're going to annex Luhansk and annex Donetsk. If you take these terms, uh, uh, Ukraine, we can have peace. Then Ukraine says, uh, no, no, this is our shit. And then the Russians will use that in social media against Ukraine. And you will see all these Muppets with these fucking peaky blinder heads, these fucking weirdos on Twitter. Like, man, Zelensky, what an asshole. He could, we could have had peace. We could have had peace. It's like Adolf Hitler says, can we stop World War II, but I keep uh, Poland, yeah? Uh, and people are like, yeah, take that deal. Take that deal. As a, with endless speculation about how he'll respond to the recent People are Ukrainian too nowadays, success man. on the battlefield. After much delay, on Wednesday morning, Putin finally announced his response in a pre-recorded speech broadcast on all... I always wonder why they pre-record this stuff. I found, I, you know there's these rumors that he's a bit fucked and he's shaking and stuff? They always pre-record everything. Also, a lot of Botox in this face, man. A lot of Botox. I sometimes feel like they want to hide his weaknesses or something. All major Russian news networks. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the most recent developments from Always the and shit. What Putin actually... I mean, dude, I'm stressed when I can't do my washing machine. Imagine how stressed he must be, man. He's literally... He's literally losing this fucking war he started, man. Uh, imagine feeling like him. If this was our Ford Alta Ford and restarted already. in the already. speech, and whether the measures announced will actually help the Russian army. Before we get into the speech, a quick look at the most recent developments on the battlefield. As we detailed in our previous video on the topic, the last few weeks have witnessed Ukrainian forces making rapid progress Very in fucking Kharkiv, good shit, man. with the new front line stabilizing. I have so much respect and sometimes I feel a bit like a pussy. I I'm watching videos of the front line and there's a lot of uh, foreign legionnaires, you know? 
there's uh, French people, German people, Japanese people. There's soldiers. I mean, they're fucking soldiers. I'm not a soldier, okay? These guys fucking know what they're doing. And they went to Ukraine to help them. I mean, they're getting paid, sure. But they're fighting for Ukraine, and they're they're and they're at the front lines, man. I have a lot of respect for these people, man. I, I was just listening to the radio as I came home, and what Vladimir Putin is doing, he's acquiring 300,000 reservists. If you are written down as a reservist in Russia, you're got, now getting activated. And I was thinking, that's me in Germany, right? If Germany will do that, they would fucking call me. Ding on the Oskil River in Kharkiv. Let's go. And along the Seversky IRL streams from the front. I would straight up. I probably shouldn't IRL stream on the front line because then the enemy knows where you are, all right? Fucking green shots and Chetney is like, oh, but I used to that. He loved that. Since then, though, Ukrainian forces have made further progress along the Seversky Donetsk, taking territory. When I look at when I look at Zelensky, I sometimes wonder. Do you think for PR, he's working out a lot lately, so he has nice muscles in videos and photos? I think so. Do you think Zelensky has, in his day, one hour workout planned, so he looks better on pictures? I think so. I've been thinking about that. He's probably working out, yeah. Either side of Lyman, which is now essentially surrounded. From here, the Ukrainians have basically two options. Firstly, they could continue eastwards along the river, putting pressure on the Russian campaign in the east. This would essentially involve moving towards Mr. Would be a special unit and Severodonetsk, two towns captured And you have to grow a beard, Russian. yes. In war times, you have to grow a beard. And Putin is mad because he can't do it. All the Botox probably killed all his uh, beards in late June. Or they could move even deeper into northern Luhansk, where there's a lower concentration of Russian troops. What I'm interested is that one day historians are going to analyze this war and I'm, I'm very excited to learn from that what went wrong for russia what exactly was the meta i think this is so interesting man like from a from a strategic standpoint i think this is so interesting man like right now right the russians are retreating you should probably keep pushing so they can't entrench themselves hoi four right hoi four with Thank the eventual you. aim of taking the railway that runs from valuki to luhansk city and this could be tempting, because since the Ukrainians captured Kupiansk a couple of weeks ago, thereby preventing any rail transit between Russian forces in Donbass and the Russian town of Belgorod, this railway has become the primary supply route for Russian forces in Donbass. And if the Ukrainians can reach it, the faltering Russian advance towards the last two Ukrainian holdouts, Kramatorsk and Slovyansk, will have their supply lines essentially cut off. At the time it's such a weird situation Ukraine finds itself in, right? How far do you go in this war? Because Ukraine isn't stupid. If they make one step into Russian land, the Russian propaganda machine is going to use that so fucking much, man. Like, Ukraine knows they cannot go too far. Also, Russia is very well known for false flag attacks, right? Guaranteed, man, they're going to do false flag attacks. The Ukrainians went over the border. They killed civilians. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm a writing, though. It looks very like the Ukrainians are going for to the first Ukraine. option. They go As of Moscow. Monday morning, Ukrainian forces have captured the towns of Yampil and Bilhorika. The latter the is position 10 is calling for the use of, of nukes. Imagine calling for the use of nukes. Aren't you literally, aren't you on the same level than Adolf Hitler? Aren't you the biggest human scum of Earth? Like, I'm going to make a very polemic question. What's, what's missing in Putin's regime to reach Hitler Germany? Obviously, a, a, a holocaust on a large scale. Even though you can say there is a genocide happening on a small scale, they're literally provenly showing that there's uh, massacres, torture, uh, uh, killings, you know. And I just hope that history books will not look back at this time as, look, when you play Hoi 4, right, what happens historically and in Hoi 4 before Germany attacks Poland? Hitler does whatever the fuck he wants, and the West is just like, yeah, okay, we want no stress, we want no fucking, okay, okay. And nowadays, if you look back in history, uh, you, you, you have to pay for that, right? Ch Neville Chamberlain is still being frowned upon today as the appeaser who tried to appease with Adolf Hitler, man, you know? And I think history will look at this time and they will judge us, the West, how we, uh, uh, how we handled hi the new Hitler, uh, Putin, his, uh, and, and, and his, uh, how we appeased, man. And all the people in the West, Zara Wagenknecht, AfD, Ali Weidel, they will go down in history as the appeasers, as the collaborators, as the scum of the earth that was pro fucking Fourth Reich on, under Putin rule, man. Anyway, that's the most recent update from the battlefield. Things are still going badly for the Russians, which leads us on to the main topic of this video Putin's speech.
Now, the first thing to say about the speech is that it was originally due to happen on Tuesday evening. That's because on Tuesday morning, the Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republics announced that they plan to hold referenda on a session to the Russian Federation, running from September 23rd to September... Man, I wonder what they are going to vote for, man. Oh, what are they going to vote September for, dude? September 27th. Russian occupying forces in Kurzon and Zaporizhia also announced that they plan to hold referenda sometime soon. We have to send everything to Ukraine. Everything, man. We gotta, sh dude, you have to fight evil. I said this four months ago. You have to fight evil. Did we not learn from history? You cannot talk to psychopath leaders like Adolf Hitler and motherfucking Vladimir Putin. They are the enemy. Sure, you have to politically be careful, man. You know there's nukes involved. Also, you are uh, the problem with Germany. You are unfortunately connected to Russia. The, all the gas is from there. And if you fuck with Russia, the gas is getting fucked. Then the Germans have no gas in winter. They don't vote for you. You lose the election. That's the fucking weakness of democracy, you know? It fucking sucks. It's complex as fuck. Any German, I'm going this far. I'm going this far, man. Tommy is now becoming a linker ratte, okay? If you live in Germany, this is what is going on in Germany right now, and your gas price is more important to you than people fucking dying for your liberty in eastern Ukraine, man, then, then you're the problem. Then you're the problem. If you, if you are so emphatic nowadays, if you are so gone from any human emotion that you cannot for a second, if any cell in your body realize that these people are being attacked, they're getting murdered and massacred, man, and your biggest problem is your gas price, then the world once again is supposed to fall anyway, man. If you can think that far, then we're gone. Then Although it's all they didn't give anyway. a specific timeline. As you'd expect, the international community made it immediately clear that they consider these referenda to be illegitimate. It doesn't even control any of these oblasts in their entirety. Regardless, just a few hours later, Russia was continuing with their plans because the Russian Duma passed new laws introducing the concepts of mobilization, martial... Important update. Growing signs that Russia is preparing to declare partial or general mobilization. Russian lawmakers in the state, Duma passed legislation to do that. ...law and wartime into the... Imagine you're a young man in Russia now, man. You must feel a bit weird. ...and stipulating new harsher penalties for desertion, surrender, and looting. Then, a few hours after that, Russian state media announced that Putin was due to give a so-called address to the country, something he hasn't done since he announced the special military operation all the way back in late February. At this point then, it was clear that the Kremlin were up to something. One thing, l listen to a German man. When I talked to my grandpas and grandmas and we talked about the war and their parents, the number one thing they all said is, man, that the war was the worst thing a human could go through, man. And that's unfortunately a bit lost nowadays. The new generations, they don't know what wars anymore, man. They don't know how terrifying it is. And the problem is that generations, they lose that that experience. They don't know what war is, man. And they think it's cool and it's fun. And yeah, I want to die for Putin, man. But then you go to war and you realize this is the fucking biggest shit ever, man. And unfortunately, every 100 years, the new generation in peacetimes doesn't know anymore the terror of war, man. It, 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 it sounds weird, but listen to me. My dad is a massive alcoholic and he's probably about to die in the next years. Now... I'm going to say something here, but listen to this. Adolf Hitler is the reason my dad is going to die. Why? My dad is a hardcore alcoholic. Why? Because he has big trauma. He had a very big, bad childhood. Why did my dad have a bad childhood? Because his parents never had love, and his parents were also traumatized. Why were his par parents traumatized? Because his grandparent generation was the children generation of World War II soldiers. Soldiers that didn't come home or came home traumatized. Often, women had to uh, raise seven children on their own because the men died in the war. Because of Hitler's actions, he did a generational trauma. Generations up until my dad are fucked beyond repair. Alcoholism, suicide, everything. Because they never overcame this trauma. And that's something you have to talk about when you go to war in Ukraine. These people, whether you win or lose, will be traumatized for, for, for generations, man. There will be so much trauma for 80 to 100 years, man. I think, for example, I'm the first generation to break through it. I'm not traumatized anymore, uh, thanks to my mom bringing me up. And that is very, very, very sad. And uh, there's no fucking winners. Rules and planned speeches. However, at 8 p.m., that speech was pushed back to 9. And at 9, it was pushed back to 10. And then finally, at 10.30, the editor of Russia Today announced that the speech had been rescheduled to Wednesday morning. Yeah, it would finally was be broadcast at 8 a.m. Moscow time 
and opened with Putin's unusual shtick. About oh, it's all their phones. Have you, did you see that all their phones? What the fuck? They're even yellow. About 10 minutes in, Putin announced that Russia will be declaring a partial mobilization. This essentially involves deploying reservists and any men that have previously served in the armed forces. All in all, this amounts to about two and a half That's million- That's the reservists. I was Googling that in Germany because I'm interested. Uh, um, for example, in Germany, there's a law. If you were in the German army for more than, what was it, 24 hours or something? You are written down in the system as a reservist, former serviceman, and you can be reactivated. Then, a few minutes later, Putin made a thinly veiled nuclear threat, warning NATO that Russia would use all means available to protect its territorial integrity. <laughs> this is pretty worrying, too. Very worrying. Dude, this is like, imagine Hitler had fucking nukes. This is what this is, pretty much. Because if Russia approves the accession referenda, and therefore considers Putin Luhansk six months and for Donetsk to be part of Russia, Ukrainian resistance in these areas would constitute threatening Russia's territorial integrity. Something I also wonder right now is, I wonder what the global intelligence services are doing. CIA, Mossad, you know, they must be working. Because one thing I understand about intelligence agencies is, you know, that's that's what I read in books and, and podcasts, etc. Intelligence agencies, their, their main goal, their main uh, reason to exist is to control, to make a connection to others, you know? For example, CIA and Russian intelligence, they know each other. They know where to meet each other. They know how to call each other. They have connections to each other so they can talk about shit, right? And I, I really wonder what they're doing right now. Are they like, hey, hey, Vladimir, are we okay with the fucking nukes, man? Ivan, what's going on over there? Therefore, legitimizing the use of nuclear weapons under Russia's own nuclear doctrine. At least. Uh, imagine you uh, you attack another country and you fuck up so bad, you have to be a little kid in the sandcastle who's like, Don't destroy my castle, I kill everybody! Uh, so he will literally go down as the biggest cunt of this fucking uh, uh, century, man. Last, last century was Hitler, this is his man. In Putin's eyes, that is. So, will this big announcement make much of a difference? Well, it does make some sense given that the Russian army is clearly running out of both weapons and troops. On the weapons front, the Russians have apparently had to buy old Iranian drones and North Korean artillery uh, in order yeah, to yeah, replenish yeah, yeah, defeated yeah, yeah, stockpiles. Yeah, yeah. And on the personnel front, Russia has already tried to raise volunteer battalions to fight in Ukraine. And over the weekend, a video emerged of the leader of the Russian mercenary Wagner group trying to recruit new infantry from a prisoner colony. However, it's both politically risky and perhaps ineffective. Uh, It'll be politically what a, what a risky TV because show, man. It's like Moscow South spent the last few this. months insisting that this is just a special operation and a partial mobilization tacitly admits that it's really a full-on war. It's also worth mentioning that when he first came to power, one of Putin's big policies was a move away from conscription towards a contracted military service. And any so mobilization away. here essentially amounts to a U-turn on that policy. Furthermore, there's no guarantee that it will even help that much. Mobilizing two and a half million men will take a minimum of a few months to organize. Yeah, you also need equipment for them. Also, the mor morale seems very low. I mean, why would you fight in a war that- and I came to a conclusion, uh, studying the Ukrainian-Russian war. I came to a conclusion. If you look at human history, I talked about this. It seems one of the worst decisions a leader can do is to go into an unjust, aggressive war. Most of the time, not always, every time you walk into an objectively speaking unjust war, you mostly lose that war. Invasion of Afghanistan was a disaster. Vietnam, World War II, Ukraine, Russia, right? Uh, In the uh, movie Apocalypse Now, the, the character of uh, Marlon Brando, who is becoming a rogue general in Vietnam, writes a book, right? He's writing a book, what he thinks is going on uh, wrong in Vietnam. And he says a very, very good thing. I always remember it. He says, this war, the soldiers in this war, the American soldiers war have no morale. You fight for nothing. You, you, you kill the Viet Cong, they never attacked you. They never did anything against you. You're not protecting your home. You're not protecting your family. When you have a war where people protect literally their own values, family, their own country, they fight their fucking ass off. Look at Ukraine. But if you have an army that goes to war that's unjust in its core, even you might not on the surface realize that, you have a high, high chance 
of of losing man i think that's so interesting if sun tzu would write another art of war you should put that into the doctrines you should never if anyone in chat will ever be a leader in the world never attack someone unjustly you need to have a good cause so you have moral for your army man imagine you're uh, someone tells you hey i need you to go to indonesia and, and kill people there man you're gonna be like what imagine though you get attacked by vladimir putin and he wants to literally kill your family and take your entire livelihood you're gonna fight your fucking ass off bro you're gonna be ready to fucking kill man you know state has the administrative but germans fought for bullshit reasons yeah they lost they lost um but germans uh, yeah spam 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 capacity to perform an effective mobilization. It's also worth noting that so far, volunteer units haven't performed all that well on the battlefield. The volunteer Third yeah, Army Corps, for example, is Call of Duty, man. in February, <laughs> apparently only lasted a few days in Ukraine. New Russian Third Army Corps lasted only a few days in Ukraine. Forbes writes that after the Third Army Corps, which is the Volunteer Corps, rushed to Kharkiv Oblast last week, the corps just melted away. <laughs> oh my god, you can't make this up. Mommy, mommy, I want to join the army. It's just like the video games. Three days later, fucking dead. <laughs> and these kind of volunteer that some, groups that is some are notorious Darwin, bro. for widespread alcoholism and poor discipline. Oh, wow, that is so interesting. Widespread alcoholism and poor discipline. Dude, I, I think oftentimes we forget what a massive, massive problem alcoholism in Russia is, man. Like, dude, I think most of us don't realize that. They have such massive alcohol issues, man. Massive, 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 massive. All in all, this announcement is as much political as it is strategic. By declaring a partial mobilization... Yeah, I always feel like when Putin says anything, it's only for symbols nowadays. It's only for symbols. Putin is appeasing Russian nationalists and escalating... One in four Russian men die before 25 total alcoholism. No fucking way. Show me a study. 25% of young Russian males die of bullshit. I don't believe that for a second. And that is, you show me a fucking proof. That sounds insane. One fourth of your entire male population dies because of one cause. That's bullshit, man. I'm waiting for a war. Trying to deter the West from providing further support. <laughs> yeah, they just want to deter the Unfortunately, West. Unfortunately for the two and a half million the Russians cares, due for man. mobilization, this looks unlikely to work. Yeah, non Which means that the only real consequence of this decision is that the war will last longer and claim far more lives. But if you want to get further updates on this story, then so we provide dead. daily updates. Shit,